Okay, welcome back, ENG460, and um, we are designing a MIPS processor using VHDL. In the previous ones, we did the MUX, we did a test bench for a MUX, and we did a sign extender with a test bench. So if we bring up our PDF, you know, we've designed the MUX for here, 5 to 5 input, 31, 2 input, 32, 32 input, 32 input. We also did a sign extender. So what I'm going to do today is... Um, I'm actually going to instantiate uh, two of these guys and make some connections in the overall MIPS uh, um, implementation. Okay, so we're going to instantiate a sign extender, and we're going to instantiate one of our muxes, and we're going to connect those two guys together, and then see what happens. All right. Okay. Let's go ahead and do that. Now here's our project. Notice over here, uh, this is our mux. Okay, we did that first. We did a test bench on the mux. We did a sign extender, and then we did a test bench on the sign extender. Okay, well, we have a project up or a file up here called MIPS VHD. This is the actual MIPS processor. We haven't done anything there. So what I want to do is I want to instantiate two of those components. So let's call the first one U1 entity. And let's see, work dot. Let's uh, do the MUX. And let's see, MUX has an architecture of behavioral. Oh, Lord, I hate that. And then you do a port map. Okay. And the easiest way to do a port map is just to go back to the entity and grab all the stuff in the MUX. Here's my MUX. Double click that. Let's just grab all these guys here. Okay. Close that. Go back to MIPS. And what I'll do is I'll copy and paste. And then I'll just delete what I don't want. Okay. So let's see. I want to delete all this. And then I'll have a comma here. And let's see, I want to delete this. And then I'll delete all this stuff. Okay. And let's see, um, put that down the next line. Okay, now what you've got to do here is you've got to map. Those are the variables of the component. They get mapped to variables of this current file. And I haven't set up those variables yet, so I'm just going to kind of leave it stubbed out like that. Now we'll still have some errors. So what I'm basically doing is instantiating a MUX. It's going to default to 32-bit input and it's going to be labeled U1. So in terms of my PDF file, I've just created this MUX right here and it's called U1. Right. Now we want to instantiate the sign extender. Right, let's do that. Let's come down to here, tab over, we'll call that U2. We'll say entity work dot. Okay, now what do I want? I want sign extender, which is right here. Uh, sign extender, yeah. All right, so let's type that in there. Sign extender behavioral. Okay, and then we have to play the same game. Got to do all our port maps and everything. So port map. And then I will end that. And then what I'm going to do is just go copy the uh, entity of the sign extender. All right, so let's open up the sign extender. And I will, okay, that's just SE and an SE. Oh, that's actually easy. I could just probably type that. Okay, so let's just copy and paste those down to here, and then we'll delete all this stuff. Replace that with a comma. Okay. And then, of course, these guys get mapped to some stuff. Okay. So now the question is, is what are you going to map them to? Well, let's see. What are you going to map those guys to? Well, let's go back and look um, at um, our, P our, um, our diagram here. The output of the sine extender gets connected to the first input of the MUX. Okay. So this guy right here. So we need to take the output of the sine extender into MUX1. All right, let's do that. I'm going to create some variables here called se out and se in. I got to declare those up here in my architecture signal. Se in, and let's see, that's going to be standard logic vector. This guy is 15 down to 0, and let's say it's equal to. Uh, let's see, is there a hex? Uh, how about one, two, three, four? We'll come back and change that later. And then I've got signal SE out. And let's see, what's that guy? Standard logic vector 31 down to 0. 
and we'll set that guy equal to um, hex quad zero quad zero all right so now let's see standard logic vector I misspelled logic vector okay let's save that so now I've created these two variables s e and s out that I've mapped down to here okay. and the output of the sine extender was going to go to the input of the mux right. so we connect that and there you go okay. so what we've effectively have done here taking the output of the sine extender to the input of the mux Okay, let's go back to our PDF, output of sine extender, input to the MUX. Now the other end of the MUX comes from a reg file, but we don't have a register file, so let's just call that uh, reg2 or something. Right? So let's see, this guy here, I'm just going to call this, uh, how about reg2, and then of course we have to declare that. So what I'll do is I'll just copy this, and I'll paste, and I'll change that name to reg2, and it's also 32 bits. Okay. And then I need to um, have a signal here, so let's just make that the same name, mux control. And then what we'll have to do is declare that up here. So let's make this guy mux control, but mux control is one bit, isn't it? So we don't need all this standard logic, and we'll set that equal to uh zero how about zero okay and then i need a mux out well let's just call it the same name okay mux out and we could put it right here mux out and let's see what's the mux out going to be well that's also going to be a 32-bit quantity because you're multiplexing two uh 30 um two bit quantities okay mux out standard logic vector 31 down to there and there you go and now what we have done is we save this. Well, we still got some errors here. Let's see, line 11. If I could figure that guy out. Uh, 15 down to up. There it is. My colon is a semicolon. Let's go to semicolon. So, so, so there you go. All the errors went away. All right. So what I've done is I've um, taken my MIPS VHDL and I said, all right, it consists of two chips. U1 is a MUX, U2 is a sine extender. The output of the sine extender is one of the inputs of the MUX. The other input of the MUX is just an internal signal, okay? Because uh, this is, these are your inputs and outputs up in your entity. These are internal signals, okay? Uh, you can think of these as like test points that you could probe in hardware if you wanted to, right? And at this point, yeah, we basically have a MIPS processor that has a MUX and a sine extender. So let's... Uh, save this now go over here and look now notice your tree your MIPS has uh, two components underneath it because the MIPS is made up of a MUX and a sine extender now the MUX is down here with a t its own test bench and the sine extender is down here with its own test bench but these guys are also fundamental components of the overall MIPS processor so let's just make sure everything is um, passing syntax check syntax now here's the MUX then the sine extender and then let's do MIPS. Does that compile? Great, that compiles. Now the next thing to do is simulate this and what I need to do is I need to create a test bench for my MIPS. Select the project, new source. Let's do a test bench on MIPS. Okay. VHDL module. Okay. No, I don't want module, I want test bench. There you go, I want test bench. And now notice, I've got three things I could test. I could test the sine extender, the MUX, or MIPS. Well, I want to test MIPS. This is a test bench for MIPS. Okay, and finish. And there you go. Um, here is our test bench file for MIPS. Let's get rid of the comments. Okay. And now look at our tree over here. You know, we designed a MUX, and we designed and we put our own test bench around MUX. We designed a sine extender, we put a test bench around a sine extender. We started to create our MIPS processor, which was composed of a MUX and a sine extender, and then we put a test bench around our MIPS. Okay. Now I'm going to stop right here, and then in the next one, we'll do the test bench file. All right? Thanks for watching.